Hey, Orange One here. So we are going to be playing Under Rail. Now, uh, Scoop Dog recommended this game to me. And yeah, this is a pretty awesome game. It's pretty tricky, though. It's a very difficult, um, like, role-playing game in, like, kind of like a Fallout-like setting, but much, much darker, if you can believe that. Um, we're going to be going on normal, because honestly, this game is hard enough. And... I think we're gonna go with classic experience, yeah. And you know what we're going to be playing this game as is a like psionic character. It's just gonna be like all about using that those mind powers. Um, which one do you need for that again? I think that like usually these things are good for those types of builds. Maybe like agility. I'm not gonna go with strength though. Mental determination. Yeah, so we should probably invest in that actually. Let's get a little bit dumber and go in will. Yeah. Except. Oh, actually hold on. You do skills as well. Oh, right. Yeah, this game has all these, like, psionic abilities, basically. We're going to invest in those as much as I can for the most part, but not fully. There's a couple other things that we want to invest in. Um, having, like, some basic biology, like, chemistry is usually pretty good. Like... Yeah, there's, there's like a couple things that you want to have some skill in. This is one for sure. We're going to do something like that. And yeah, I'm, we're going to see how this goes. I've heard that you actually need to be really careful with how you build these characters. Um, oh man, isn't there like, there's some with like... They have to do with like um there's some really good perks you know as you as you can see as any good role-playing game they've got some really interesting things here hmm i don't know and we can get two feats let's get um I don't know. I'm not sure actually. Let's go with. Yeah, let's go with Nimble for sure. And. Let's go with Opportunist. That sounds good. Oh, I must use all my skill points. Oh, I've got some skill points left still. Um, got some points and guns too. Because I, I think I may use guns a little bit, but not much. Uh, I think that's it, yeah. Cool. Let's see how Cud does here. It's, I mean, the intro I think will be okay for. Especially with how we've, we're have we just going to be psionic. So yeah, there's no like real spoken dialogue, but like the written dialogue is really good. And it's actually pretty funny in some instances. Yeah, I don't really like to read out loud, so you have to read it out for yourself there. Sorry. <laughs> the crossroad and the cove, those are important locations. Thing about lurkers and some old man. Okay. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'm not actually in on screen. It's like these three characters talking right now. It's 
been a while since I've played this game. Like, maybe a year. Because I played it a little bit like a year ago. I had a couple other things going on on the channel at the time. So I didn't end up playing it. And I just forgot about it, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember this guy. Yeah, I honestly need to just have a little refresher, and it's actually not a half bad tutorial. And you guys will get to see a little bit about it as well. But he's telling me to go over here, so it's like a point and click kind of thing. And then you can also, if you right click, you can like move your, your um, mouse around, or your uh, camera around. And you can like click on all these different things. Okay, so they will give me some instructions here. Tab, oh yeah, hi highlightable objects. Okay, yep. I remember a little bit about this. Alright. Okay, yeah, I remember dragging things into the slots. Yep. Okay, uh, so that I can take. It's not in any slot. I think I have to then put that here. And then it's like, oh, that's equipped, right? And then there's a couple other things. So we'll, we'll just take all of that, honestly. And we'll just start equipping some things. Um, there's also a crossbow that you can have. You can have like two different range things, or, or two different weapons. Yeah. I can put on some armor there. Or is that, that's two-handed things that takes no doesn't take up two slots okay interesting okay I've, I've kind of started to remember a little bit about this oh yeah and that's tab so it shows me all this stuff all right I think that we're ready Yeah, I gotta short circuit them. Okay, right, I remember this a little bit. Yep, yeah, there's all those typical role playing things, right? Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in the game. Ooh, so I'm getting shot right now. And so it's like their turn and they're all attacking me, I think. Okay, so now it's my turn, right? I do have those things. Can I toss that? I've only got a 19% chance of that working. That's not a very good chance. Um, but it takes a certain amount of action points, I think, to throw that. Um, so if you look at this, you can see like some, a number of stats, right? But if I want to throw that, I don't think that takes a lot to throw it. If I go here, yeah, much better chance of actually hitting them. Yeah, see, and then that's guaranteed. But what I want to do is honestly just run up to these guys and toss this out. And that would be good, <laughs> right? Alright, they're all short-circuited. Yay! And then I don't think that I actually need to fight them. But I could try and... and fight them. I think... I can then hit them. I don't know. Oh, I think I need to... end my turn. And then... oh, the combat's done. Oh yeah, I need, I need to just walk through here. Cool. Yay! Hello. The first time I did this, it took me a lot longer to figure this out. I've, I, I'm just doing this off memory. There's some really cool sci psionic stuff going on, but this is a little bit about the lockpicking. Um, right, okay. They can do that by doing my inventory or by selecting the right object. Okay, cool. We'll take all that. Okay. Let's 
go over here. Locked. So I need to, um... How do I do this again? I've got my lock pick. Or I need to, like... Oh, I, I use it from here. Is that it? Yeah, here we go. I need to click on it here and then click on it there. Got it. We're not going to be doing an awful lot of that with our character and how they're built. You have to really be built for these things to actually use them. As you can see, our skill is not super, super high on them. Um, nothing. Oh. And this one's a hacking one, right? So you need to use the, uh, the hacking tool. Oh, this needs energy. Oh gosh, how do I charge this again? Uh, can I recharge? Yep. Okay, yeah, and then that will charge up this hacking tool that's now got some charge in it. And then I can then apply that to the box. Yeah. Typical role playing. <laughs> Just wait till we get to the atypical stuff, though. It is pretty atypical and cool. Where's my character walking? Oh, I think I just clicked there, and then they just started walking. Um, let's go stealth mode. Oh, hello. I can just EMP you. And then I'm gonna just run around. I think there might be another one, so I'm not sure if I want to exit out of combat completely. And then, yeah. Okay, so it's it's back and awake now. I kind of knew that I, I should be quick on my feet there. I thought that the other ones were going to also respawn. I can't fight that thing. It's way too tough. Not until we've unlocked our psionic potential, but we need to meet, like, the, uh, the doctor to do that. And a couple other specialists that we have around here. Okay, I think that we can exit out of combat. You can exit out of combat if you're not immediately in combat, or you can stay in combat time. The enemies are gonna move around as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go. See ya, bud. Got our typical citizen vault thing kind of going on here, but it's actually not your typical thing. There's some really cool stuff. You can, like, look at this. And, um, there's a number of little, like, lore things that you can read from stuff. There's also useful little things like this, right? Probably want that stuff. Did I equip that by right clicking on it? No, I didn't. Let's put that on instead of my, my shirt and pants. Oh, maybe... Let's, let's actually just keep our civilian clothes on because it affects our persuasion. Don't want that. I mean, we're not super persuasive or anything. Let's turn on the lights. Could the, that rat mean there's some sort of lock I don't know let's need to go on my computer first no oh, yeah key card all right and then some dude telling us to go to the office Right, it's like you got all the, the stuff that you need. Okay, in the desk we have compass, some cash. Oh yeah, all the different factions in the game have different cash, which I love. And then, you know, you can only use the right one with the right faction. Okay, here we go. We're out in the open. And 
if I look at this, there's like nothing in here. This whole place is like a really cool, just like interesting place, but as you can see most of it, you can't go in. Not unless you want to be a thief. And then we got all these different things. I think the dude for the main quest is like here. I think it's the commons. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh man, it took me a while to find them. I remember the first time I played this. It's in the messages, I'm sure. And then if I press J or, or something. No, there's map. Okay, so I've got my map and then it's telling me all the different levels. Oh yeah, and then it tells me Tanner's office is there. Cool. And then it's help there. All kinds of stuff. There's notes. And then that's telling me the commons level 3. Yeah. But as you can see, you need a little bit of guiding. I remember a little bit about this character. Not a whole lot, but he is interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so they, they need it for, like, strategical importance, basically. Because there's some other factions in the tunnels. Oh man, the factions in this game are pretty intense and crazy. Um, and this is, like, the bar. <laughs> so as you can imagine, it's like... Your post-apocalyptic bar, right? This guy... And I think... I don't know, is it this guy as well? They're special. We've got some unique dialogue. Yeah, so there's some people that have some actual like dialogue like Arlene here and Jack Quicksilver. We'll we'll come back to Jack in a little bit. Before we go on to the main quest, we are going and to go see the doctor in Psionix, right? They even tell you Psionix right here. It's like, hey, if you want if you want to check this that part of the game out. I think there's yeah, there's like a doctor. Is it this guy? Of oh, those tests we did earlier. Yep, psionic potential. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, basically. There's magic in the game. Biocorps. Blah blah, hand-waving sci-fi. <laughs> disable your inhibitor. <laughs> so, we need to disable part of my brain. <laughs> the old fashioned way getting my brain no we're gonna get psionic potential this is where the game gets crazy yo it's where it gets fun <laughs> we're gonna get some powers and get to play around with them Specialists in our station, so that he tells you about a number of them.
Yeah, they all have like kind of quests or related things to do. And then there's Ezra. Yep. Oh yeah, I remember Ezra. Ezra's really cool. It's kind of creepy though. I think that was the guy with the, the fizzy water that I was just talking to. Yeah, so, <laughs> Mr. Fizzy Water, we're gonna go back and talk to him, I, I'm pretty sure. And you have to, like, I think pay them, basically, to learn psionic powers, but I think you get, like, the first one free or something. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, we're going to go talk to Ezra first, I think. It's actually pretty interesting. I think that he can also just like straight up kill you or something. And yes, our camera, our guy does not look the most friendly. So there's this guy right here. <laughs> He's talking about some coding stuff. And here's Ezra. Yeah, check that, that guy out. I'm kind of glad that I can't hear him talking, right? I could ask him about if he's blind. <laughs> okay, um... Alright, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna stare him back. I could try and wrestle back control of my body or give in. <laughs> try and take control of him. I think this might be the way that you die. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know if that plays out differently. Okay, there's, oh yeah, there's like some sort of like battle here. How do we do it? This guy's attacking me right now. Ow. So there's some some sort of way of casting abilities, but I've forgotten how, how I do it. Um, but, but it's like, is it F? Yeah, I think it's F, yeah, okay. Lucky I remembered that. We're gonna hit you with our normal overload, buddy. Can I do that twice? Yeah, and you can see it's taking some of my movement points and stuff. I think that that's all of my movement that I can do, so I'm just gonna get, have to get hit by them. These guys, these little um, Azurdi, they're like little side beetles or whatever. 101, totally fine. When they get in groups, you want to be careful, though. There we go. Uh-oh, I'm getting knocked out again. So I got neural overload from that dude. Who then, like, dumped me back in my place. <laughs> Thanks, Ezra. <laughs> I think that there's a way that you can basically just end the game if you, that goes wrong in that conversation. I, I remember doing that once and being like, wait, what? <laughs> it's pretty funny, right? I'm just kind of curious what Ezra will say after that, that encounter, right? That's pretty funny, right? And then he can teach you more. But you have to have, like, higher skill. And I think you have to also pay him, I'm pretty sure. So he's he's given me my first, like, ability to do damage. A little, like, mind melt, essentially. And then there's also, like, the time one, and there's some other stuff. 
This one I remember is like a pretty basic quest that we could do. Um, but we also could go and talk to the guys up in the comments. I think Gone if you have to like pay them. I think you have to pay one of them. There's Ethan. It's all about messing with time, basically, I think. <laughs> yeah, I can give him 50 credits and then he'll teach me this thing. Totally worth it. <laughs> The video rooms. I think that's one of these these little rooms off to the side. Okay, and then if I go to F, now I've got that as well. So it does is it Yeah, it does damage over time basically. And there's also other things that he can teach you that actually like does what you'd expect with like time being able to move backwards and forwards and whatnot. Wait, hold on. Where am I going? What are we doing? We gotta go talk to Mr. Cool Jack Quicksilver over there. He's got psionic power, you know? You can see that he has psionic power. That's, that's how you know. What does he trade in? Um, he's got different coins from different places. Actually, got a number of different goods. Oh wait, doesn't this guy give you like a quest? Yeah, this guy gives you like a. Uh... Yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, a a little quest. I don't think I can learn any psionic abilities from him, but he's an interesting little dude. I mean, I should probably talk to Arlene. Y'all probably are like, wait, what does this person say, right? <laughs> no exceptions. <laughs> psionic trips. That's that's funny. Right, right, right. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. You should probably get a little bit of the background. Pirates, hmm? Something about like the black eels? I don't know. Whatever. I hadn't seen that dog before, that was kind of cool. Um, so there's also this guy in the agriculture that has a little quest for you that's, I think, not too hard. He's like, isn't he down here? Yeah, here's Quentin. I'll have to probably do his quest in the next one. <laughs> Right. Okay, that sounds totally safe. Ah. <laughs> Can I try that? Okay. Alright. So yeah, we'll probably have to do that quest next. 
there's there's a couple of different quests that you gotta do for like people. Like there was that taking of that one place, which we could probably do with our our two abilities. But there was also um, someone was it Ethan who did the fire one? I've forgotten. There's the punching in the fire, so I think this guy's the fire one. So I think he wanted us to go to the cave tunnels. And as you can imagine, there's also other really cool places that are very detailed and interesting in their own right. Um, I'm going to end this here, though. Thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.